Renewed calls for police reform are intensifying after the death of Tyree Nichols. On Thursday, the leadership of the Congressional Black Caucus met with President Biden. Even though they reached an agreement on steps toward reform, CBC Chair Congressman Stephen Horsford stressed that meaningful police reform would require bipartisan support. And that could start with a forthcoming bill to address the alleged catalyst for the police beating of Tyree Nichols, the traffic stop. It's called the Investing in Safer Traffic Stops Act of 2023. And joining me now is the bill's lead sponsor, Congressman Richie Torres of New York, a member of the CBC who also sits on the Financial Services Committee and the Select Committee on Strategic Competition between the United States and China. Congressman Torres, welcome back to the Sunday show. Uh, what in this new bill could have helped Tyree Nichols? Well, traffic stops are often a powder keg for police brutality. And as a society, we should re-examine the policy of putting traffic enforcement in the hands of armed police officers. It seems to me that the policing of traffic violations should be a civilian function. And so I'm proposing legislation that would create incentives, that would create grants for state and local governments to transfer traffic enforcement from police officers to civilians. Uh, according to the New York Times, uh, police officers have killed more than 400 unarmed motorists over the course of five years. And so if we were to civilianize or automate or even demilitarize traffic enforcement in America, as I'm proposing, it would prevent all the shootings and beatings and chokings that originate from traffic stops. You know, furthermore, there are 730 municipalities that derive at least 10 percent of their revenues from fines and fees associated with traffic stops. Over-policing has become a business model for far too many local governments in America. And so the purpose of the legislation is to fundamentally change the economics of policing, to remove the perverse incentive for these abusive traffic stops. Well, you know, that's what we found out um, um, after Ferguson and the death of Michael Brown in the two Justice Department reports. One of them was specifically on how Ferguson was funding its budget through through traffic stops. But I'm wondering just a, a little pushback I could imagine that would come from the right, which is, wait a minute, though, traffic stops, you know, cops are putting their lives in danger. You know, we've seen cops who have been who've gotten into gun battles or had their lives threatened at traffic stops is that a is that a legitimate concern or are so many people being killed uh, by law enforcement at traffic stops that would have been killed if they hadn't been stopped like that in the first place look we know from experience that traffic stops are a disproportionate driver of police brutality so the cost far outweighs the benefit. And let me be clear, if a police officer is pursuing a violent criminal, like a murderer or a rapist, then it's legitimate to conduct a traffic stop in the course of enforcing the law against the violent crime. But if it's, if it's purely a traffic violation, like Tyree Nichols was stopped on an unsubstantiated suspicion of reckless driving, police officers should have no business handling those kinds of cases. So do you think you will be able to get bipartisan support for your bill? Look, the bill as crafted is respectful of state rights, but, you know, Republicans will not solve the problem of police brutality because in their minds there is no problem to solve. Republicans deny and downplay police brutality and deny and downplay the systemic racism that causes it. You know, the need to pass legislation like the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act has taken on new urgency. It would bring greater accountability and transparency to policing. But Republicans have been the single greatest stumbling block to police reform in America.